Welcome to Crazy Nuclear Rocket Engines, episode number four, Pulsed Solid Core. If you haven't watched the introduction video, please do that now. Expanding on the fission discussion in the introduction, when a uranium-235 atom splits, there are multiple products. First, there are fission fragments, the new atoms that are made up from most of the mass of the uranium atom. Second, there are fast-moving neutrons that used to be part of the uranium atom and a high-energy gamma ray. The fission fragments are moving very fast and therefore contain 95% of the energy that is created. That motion, or heat, is what heats up the nuclear core, and, if we get too much of it, what melts the nuclear core. The neutrons and gamma rays contain 5% of the energy that is created, but it is energy that can travel outside the solid core. The goal of the pulsed solid core is to harness that 5% to superheat the hydrogen to a higher temperature than the general temperature of the core. We start with a hydrogen channel that is right next to a thin vertical channel of uranium fuel. We then use external means to increase the reactivity of the fuel, so it goes from very little fission to a large amount of fission quickly. This generates a large pulse of neutrons, which travel into the hydrogen fuel and heat it up very quickly. Because we are heating with neutrons, we don't have the temperature limits that we had in the solid core design so we end up with much hotter hydrogen and therefore a higher exhaust velocity and specific impulse. Immediately after that pulse, the resulting heat pulse melts the fuel, destroying the engine, which would seem to be a disadvantage. However, what if we could put something next to the fuel to suck all the heat away so that it wouldn't melt? It turns out that to conduct the heat away quickly enough, you need a material that is really good at conducting heat and has a reasonable melting point. So liquid lithium metal is the coolant of choice. The core sits idle until the lithium has pulled enough heat out of the fuel so it can survive another pulse. But how to create that fission pulse? Generally speaking, the goal with a reactor is to slowly and smoothly increase the power of the reactor. If we end up with a big pulse of fission, that is generally a bad thing. Less like a reactor and more like a bomb. Interestingly, this is actually a solved problem. There is a research reactor known as Triga that is used in many universities. Normally, it has a max power of only 250 kilowatts, and it typically runs at much lower power levels, but it can also operate in a pulsed mode. This is a video of Triga operating in pulse mode. Watch for the blue flash. And up. Five. That blue flash is known as Cherenkov radiation, and is directly a result of the fission pulse. This pulse was 500 megawatts, or 2,000 times the normal maximum output. The loud noise is a control rod being removed to start the pulse, or replaced in the core after. Triga accomplishes this by using a very specific uranium-zirconium hydride fuel. When this fuel is cold, it increases the rate of fission, but when it gets hot, it decreases the rate of fission. That automatically creates a pulse of about 40 milliseconds, or 1 25th of a second wide. Here's a diagram of the overall propulsion system, which is just like a standard nuclear thermal rocket, except for the lithium coolant loop to take the excess heat away. To get sufficient thrust out of this approach, the core is arranged as a stack of flat plates of fuel, with channels for the hydrogen propellant and the lithium coolant. Let's talk about heat and power. A smallish nuclear thermal rocket engine has a thermal power of about 370 megawatts. That suffices to give roughly the thrust of an RL-10 rocket engine. That energy needs to come from the 5% of the fission energy that goes into neutrons and gamma rays. The lithium coolant loop therefore needs to deal with 95% of the fission energy, or 7,000 megawatts. It's not quite that bad because we can use the hot lithium to preheat the hydrogen, but any energy we want to use to go above the non-melting core temperature can only come from the 5%. That waste heat needs to be radiated away. Current satellite radiators, such as these on the International Space Station, can radiate about 400 watts per square meter. 7,000 million divided by 400 is equal to 17 million square meters of radiator. Here's a scorecard for pulsed solid core. On the plus side, the specific impulse is limited only by the ability to remove heat, and might reach 5,000 to 15,000, or perhaps more. It can also operate as a standard nuclear thermal rocket. 
On the downside, liquid metal coolants are very heavy and you need to be able to liquefy all of it at startup. You probably need a dual loop system. Heat isn't much of a problem in the standard nuclear thermal reactor because it goes mostly to the hydrogen propellant. Here you need to be able to get rid of 19 times the heat that goes into the propellant. It's simply not feasible. If cooling doesn't work exactly right, you end up with molten lithium, hydrogen, and very hot uranium mixing together. That has core explosion written all over it. And while it's not a nuclear explosion, it's not going to be kind to the rocket engine. And as usual, it's radioactive and heavy, especially heavy because of the lithium cooling loop. I give this design a nuclear rocket craziness rating of 7. If you enjoyed this video, please listen to Amy Lee's haunting vocals on Evanescence's 2006 song, Lithium.